The 1864 Battle of Orico was one of the most heroic encounters of the New Zealand Wars. In July 1863, Governor George Grey sent British troops south into the Waikato. By February 1864, the troops had reached Te Awamutu. Waikato Māori requested reinforcements and among those to respond were warriors from the Tūhoi tribe and a group from Ngāti Raukawa, who lived near Maungatautari, Waikato's sacred mountain. Both groups wanted to engage the enemy immediately, but Riwi Maniapoto, the local Māori warrior chief, urged caution. Up until now, Māori tactics had been to avoid a pitched battle with the government troops. Instead, they built pā, or fortified villages, near British outposts in order to provoke attacks. For this strategy to succeed, however, pā sites needed to have an effective escape route. The two Hoi warriors insisted on selecting a site for a pā at Oroko, close to the British encampment at Kihikihi. Riwi Maniapoto advised that this was a poor site, but he was ignored. Though he was a respected chief, Riwi's group of Ngāti Maniapoto numbered only about 50, while his Tūhoi and Rokawa reinforcements totaled about 200. The Māori warriors set to work on the gentle hilltop peach grove at Oroko. Within a few days, a complex of trenches and mounds had been created, but the pa was far from complete when British troops attacked it on March 31st. The pa looked insubstantial, but as the first wave of British troops found out, it was very effective. As the British repeatedly attacked, they were repelled by Riwi's disciplined defenders who made effective use of their limited ammunition. On occasions, they even fired peach stones instead of bullets. But the British began to dig a flying sap, a long, shallow trench from their lines toward the walls of the Pa. After two days, British reinforcements arrived, bringing the government's force up to about 1,200, over four times the number of Māori inside the Pa. Outnumbered, surrounded, short of water, and lacking any escape route, the fate of the warriors inside the Pa seemed inevitable. Gilbert Mayer, a colonial officer fluent in Māori, was sent with a white flag to persuade those inside the pa to surrender. E hoa mā whakarongo, ko te kupu tene a te tianara, ka nui tona miharo ki to koutou maia, ka ti me mutu te riri, puta mai ki a mātou, ki a ora o koutou tinana. Friends, listen. This is the word of the general. Great is his admiration of your bravery. Stop. Let the fighting cease. Come out to us that your bodies may be saved. In a few minutes came the answer in a clear, firm tone. E hoa! Ka fa fai tonu a hauki a koe. Ake! Ake! Friend, I shall fight against you forever. Forever. Before the British troops could launch their final assault, a small group of Māori attacked the head of the British sap. Meanwhile, another group suddenly emerged and dashed directly towards the government lines. Firing as they ran, the escaping group challenged the British troops and managed to break through. But even beyond enemy lines, the fleeing Māori warriors weren't safe, as a pursuing column of forest rangers cut many down. Oroko resulted in a vital victory for the British, yet the battle is remembered today for the courage of Riwi's defenders and their refusal to surrender.